Friday. Yeah. Friday. Yes. Yeah. Thank goodness. I like saying thank God it's Friday. Or sometimes I just go T G I F T E. Yes. My God, man. We get a long weekend, right? Uh, yeah, we get a three-day weekend. <laughs> We've become real smart. Finally. We three take, days. <laughs> we take we take two weeks, come back a week, do a long weekend. Do a week. Yeah, and then it's, it's long not? weekend. Then it's long weekend time. Yeah, and then next week we've got a short week. Yeah, I think it works out good because uh, if we would have last Monday off, like if last Monday was Memorial Day, mm -hmm. or Labor Day, I mean, uh, then it would have been over. Yeah, that's not good. And we've been sitting here going, well, we got a weekend, but then Monday we're back. But now, it's a long weekend. And is it your turn to take a sick day? Three day week? Yeah, I think it is. All right, good. Yeah. And in, in about uh, a week and a half? Yeah, a week and a half. All so right. Midweek. Just make it midweek. I like yeah. splitting up the weeks. I like that too. It makes the uh, week go by really quick. All of a sudden, on a Wednesday, I'm playing golf or something, then come back for two days. When you could jump nice. from Tuesday to Thursday. You jump from Tuesday, which is the day after Monday, to Thursday, which is the day before Friday. Right. It's like it didn't even work. By the way, people, this is um, jokes. Yeah. And this is sarcasm. Fucking you moron. idiots! There are a couple of really moronic people out there. And I love the people that get it and just pound the idiots. Yeah. That's my new thing. Pound the idiots that claim to be fans of the show but don't know the basics of this radio show. Been listening to years, and, you know, it really disappoints me when you got... Yeah, if not, you've been listening for, to, for years, you maybe should understand sarcasm. I really, I really hate, you know, tearing down the curtain, but you got it from time to time. I would say... 95 to 97% of what you hear on this show yeah. is just jokes. It's just bullshit. And then 2 to 3%, we get real serious. Yeah. And then you, you get uncomfortable and like, uh, uh, and then we go back to the jokes. Yeah. And there's also something called sarcasm that I think we're the best at. That would and be if you don't understand, 99% of the show. Yeah, and if you don't understand sarcasm, then you have no business, and I mean no business, listening to this radio show. Turn it off. No business. Yes. I, I put up a video yesterday on, on, on my YouTube channel where it's literally uh, uh, what goes on right before we turn the mics on. Yeah. And me and Ann are bitching, like, oh, God, why can't it be 1030? Oh, Sam, can you fast forward the clock? Uh, blah, blah. Just bitching and complaining, right? I got to see that one because I, I remember you taping it yeah. or, or videotaping it, filming it, whatever it is, chipping it. And uh, I was like, oh, that's probably pretty funny. It was funny. Yeah. And it was, it was very sarcastic. Yeah. And then, you know, I, I check out the comments and there's a couple of people go, well, uh, if you're so miserable, you guys, then, then why don't you just quit? <laughs> It's like, you're kidding, right? Yeah. And then you got to read it like five or six times. You're like, you're trying to see. Maybe he's being sarcastic, well, but that, then you realize, yeah. I do give people the benefit of the doubt when I read some of this stuff. I'm like, yeah. all right, is he being sarcastic? Is there a humor in there? What is going on? And then I read it a bunch of times, and I realized, no, the guy is just an idiot. Yeah. He, t he took this video I made as, as, as being serious, that we, we hate being here. We hate doing radio. Like, we want to document how miserable we are on, <laughs> on video and pop it up on Twitter. And, and then, you know, the guys that get uh, it, you know, pounded them pretty good. But then I had a reply, which I, I rarely do. I, just, I, I uh, rarely deal with these idiots. And, and I had to write, silly goose, hate to tear down the curtain, but it's just a joke. It's called sarcasm. You're kidding, right? Uh, well, I'm getting here. It's because you got to use the winky face on the Internet. To elicit sarcasm. So See, one of us has to winky face? You got a winky face. That, you know what? That's a good, <laughs> that's a good point. Face. From now on, when we make these sarcastic <laughs> videos, how we hate what we do, hate our lives, just look for one person winking. Winky. That'll be your clue. Right. That uh, we're just fucking around. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I hate what I do so much, and Ann hates what he does so much, yeah. that all we do is give you extra... Hate what we do. <laughs> it was funny because it was like right before the mics went on, too. Uh, <laughs> and we're just like, oh, God, what time is it, Sam? Yeah. Is it, can you push the clock forward a little bit? <laughs> like, and, I mean, uh, you know, God. and that's, that's what a lot of us think anyway. Yeah. You know. I mean, we all want to have the easiest day possible, right? When right. it comes to work or. No matter what you do. Or making a living. Exactly. But if I, if I really hated what I do, I, I wouldn't be tweeting. I wouldn't be making videos. No, I, I, would, I would just be punching the clock. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't really like how we're treated yet, but I'm hoping that will turn around eventually. Yeah, there's a few things. You know, I don't think any job is perfect. You know, and, and it is true. We try to get out of here as quick as possible. And, and people are confused by that. That is a fact. We try to get out of here as quick as possible because yeah. people that wear ties in this business, mm -hmm. their whole job is to bring you down. Man, it's true. Yeah. So if we could avoid them. It's actually good for the radio show. That's why we bolt. And I'm not even joking about that. No, no joking, no sarcasm. Guys in suits, you have to avoid if you do radio. Yeah. At all costs. Yeah, for the most part, it's just a, a downer. You just go out and, and, oh, you had a good time, you had fun, and then it's, oh, okay, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Ugh, we got to have this talk about this or that. Right, so... Hey. So there you go. I hope that clears it, clears it up uh, for a few idiots out there. Actually, or they might just be, you know, haters that don't even like the show, but they're yeah. obsessed with just, you know, hating on everything. I ran into a little of that uh, last night, as a matter of fact. Really? What happened? On uh, Red Eye. Yeah, how did that go? I like Red Eye. We have a lot of fun. Uh, Greg is, is uh, funny. Andy, the whole crew over there, really cool guys. Hang out. It's uh, a lot of fun. Joking about everything. But then it seems like maybe some of the upper echelon over at Fox are starting to come down on him a little bit. Oh, see. Yeah, because... Uh, Have we been there a few times? I, I've noticed now from the, the first couple of times I've been on the show till now, uh, a, few, uh, a few scalpel mo maneuvers to the material. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. And stuff that would have just been nothing. That means uh, the show's on someone's radar. Someone, uh, yeah, someone watched it. So it's on someone's radar, uh, and a couple of um, a couple of things were were blatantly cut out mm -hmm. from last night's uh, broadcast. I was watching and going like, "Wow, I can't believe they cut that out." What was cut out? Everything I said. <laughs> oh, really? It wasn't everything I said, but um, did they chop your appearance? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I they did. It. First, I went in. And uh, uh, a love, lovely lady uh, pulled me aside, and she had... See, when you go on that show, you, you they send you the subject, and you send back over, like, like talking points. Yeah, some of your thoughts. Yeah, a few thoughts Where you on, might go with the, the right, certain things. Stuff right. like that. Sure. And um, Which, by the way... Yeah. Sucks. It's a little and, 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 weird. And I know they have to do it, and I... Yeah. I mean, Greg and Andy Levy and the rest of those guys... They can work off the cuff. Yeah, they're very good. We work off the cuff. We, we have some general ideas, and we go with it. Sometimes we yep. fall on our faces, but it's a, ver you know, you know what I mean? We, it, it just feels better to do it this way. Could you imagine if we had to prepare every little statement and stuff like that? No, there are and a lot it, of shows that do that, like a lot but, of radio shows that do that, and they, they suck. A lot of radio shows and a lot of TV shows. Yeah. Yep. So, unfortunately, you can't just go on the air being, being a talent yeah, knowing what you're talking about and just going with it, they have to kind of check your. I, I'm just kind of like you know spelling it out for the listeners. Mm -hmm. They have to check your shit before you go on. That's crazy. Yeah, and it kind of I think it sets up the host um, of whatever show you're doing it, with that format. It sets the host up so they're able to kind of lead you uh, into the direction you want to go in with with what you you want to say, which is fine. And I don't even really have a problem with that because it's actually it helps. Um, it helps with your writing. Mm -hmm. Like I've noticed, it really does help if if you take a subject and now you have to actually think and write something out with some type of humor to it or an idea. Right. It does help with uh, with your writing. So I really don't have a problem with with that. Mm -hmm. But when it is used to kind of go over and go like, okay, um, this, this, that. So I, I have a couple of the things here that I uh, I wrote for last night's show, and the a producer, one of the the ladies, came over to me and said, "Ah, oh, let me just talk to you a minute about a couple of things." And I instantly went, oh my "I went God. I, out loud." I went, "Uh oh, uh, you uh -oh. did say that." Yeah, at least? I went, Good. "Uh oh." So she goes, "Oh, there's just a couple of issues with a, but, a couple they, of things," and they always try to downplay. It. They're like, "Uh, oh, you know, I just we just need to talk about a couple yeah, of yeah, things." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that nothing. means they got major problems with what you're about to say it's or write, and they're gonna make sure you don't say or write those things. And I don't even blame. I don't blame her. I don't blame anyone on the show. I blame executives. I blame well, suits. I blame lawyers. Mm -hmm. I blame people that uh, that kowtow to fucking uh, interest groups that get letters from people and all of a sudden just knee jerk. 
uh, and, and pull whatever that person writing said to pull. Uh, that's who I blame. Yeah. And, Scared executives. And radio and TV could be so much better if, if those people would just go away or, or they could still go to work, just, but just keep their, their, their mitts out of uh, right. the creative process. Exactly. I mean, you would get way better TV if people would just relax yep. and let the creative, uh, you know, talented people just do their thing. Just let them roll. Just that's let what them they roll. Do. It's let them roll. Job. I mean, not to make any excuses, but when, when we, I know, I mean, this oh, is all, okay, because okay, this is all, this is all yeah, this the same thing. All encompassing. When we were on regular radio again, holy crap, they oh made God. it tough. Oh. And I'm not making excuses, you know. I, 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 to this day, I'm proud uh, of what we did when we went back to regular I radio. Think we did an amazing job with but, what we were given. But they just made it so hard, and you want to sit these guys down, and we did try and go, will you just fucking relax and let us do yeah. what you hired us to do? Let us just do the goddamn job. And that's the answer to why TV is shit, why most radio is shit, is because these people are just over-controlling everything. Yeah. But anyway, back yeah. to last night. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so she came up, and one of the problems was, uh, here's here was some of the subjects. Uh, the guy that got his finger bit off um, at one of these healthcare uh, protests, right, demonstrations. Right, right. A guy apparently, this was kind of a funny story. A guy's driving by this um, demonstration of these people that are for Obama's health care. He's against it. He drives up, and uh, some guy starts yelling at his face. So he punches him in the face like three times. When he came back with his fist the third time, his pinky was gone. <laughs> the guy bit his fucking pinky off. Uh, another one is this, this green czar, Van Jones. Wait, what about the pinky? Did you have a line that they cut? Uh, no, no, they didn't cut anything out of that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just brought up something of how, well, it, if it was like Obama's health care plan, uh, he'd be sitting there with his pinky for a week in a hospital waiting room, and they'd sew on like a raisin for his uh, <laughs> what, whatever was left. Nothing hysterical there. I just thought the, the story itself is pretty funny. Right. punches him and comes back without a pinky. Right. But this whole thing, the green czar, this Van Jones, is uh, the, the jobs, green jobs, uh, you know, the whole green movement czar that Obama just appointed. This guy is one of the biggest racists ever. That's coming from me. This guy, is a black guy, uh, gets the job uh, with, without being elected in or anything. Obama's just appointing these czars. And um, there's some clips of him coming up that are just amazing. He calls himself a communist. Mm -hmm. Calls himself a communist. Uh so, he actually calls himself a communist. Yes, he okay. said he he's a communist, uh, and, and uh, just a racist. He's, he's an awful, awful man who uh, shouldn't be uh, have have any type of influence um, f uh, to the president. He's horrible. Throw him out. Um, so the whole thing was uh, about him uh, just saying that the the Republicans are assholes or something. He said in one of his speeches he used asshole and shit like that. Uh, I just said that it's kind of cool. Uh, it's bringing the word commie back because you haven't been able to use the word commie. And then I said something like, he's a red green czar. I go, red and green, you know what that makes? Brown, enough said. <laughs> like <laughs> a red a green joke. czar. It's, yeah. it's a paint joke. Yeah. It's a joke about paint mixing paint. And um, woof, woof. They said, no way. No. Did you use it on the show, though? And they cut it out? No. I just, they I was saved it ahead of time? I was able to put, say red green czar. But I wasn't able to use the color joke, which is kind of the kicker. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's the punchline. They're like, well, you know, the race thing, but they're very sensitive about Ugh. that. Very Ugh. sensitive. And then the um, the soda tax uh, thing. They, they want to start taxing soda and other fat um, food because it uh, hurts people's health and it winds up costing a lot of money for diabetes and obesity and heart disease and everything else. So, um, Which, by the way, they don't care about all those things. No, it, they it, want it, money. It's just another excuse to get money. They That's get all. Tax, of they, course. they don't care about the individual. Yeah. Uh, I hope people understand that. So uh, I, I said it's going too far. We need fat people around. They're really the last people we can make fun of without getting into too much trouble, which is true. Could always make fun of fat people. They mm -hmm. really don't. They might get mad, but they don't have a, like a fat group that really has any power. Um, and I said, I do like how I, I was going to say, I do like how they're fighting against this tax. Uh, they're revolting and revolting, <laughs> which, you know, it's uh, all right, people. Look, this isn't my top of the line shit here. Not it's for television. Uh, but. 
But it's like no, 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 no. You're you're. It's just revolting and revolting. I thought it was kind of funny because no, it's a revolt and they're revolting. You don't have to make any excuses. It's a great line, <laughs> and to to see that on TV in the moment yeah, would be yeah. very funny. Just, you know, I'm, right now it's in the context of I couldn't say one word of that. That whole thing. I can't make fun of the fact that we can make fun of them, and I couldn't say they're revolting and revolting. I was just able to say uh, it's good to see them. Uh, they're revolting. It's just like what we. We started yeah. the show with it. It's just a joke. What's the problem with I joking know. about yeah. fat people being revolting? Uh, then then there's this um, uh, Miss Universe contest mm -hmm. where I guess part of the um, thing now is for them to fill up condoms with water and blow them up to see if they pop, to pop them. And it's supposed to be some kind of condom awareness thing. But obviously it's just some sexual thing for Miss Universe to do. Uh, and some people are kind of upset with, with the fact that they have to do this now. And Donald Trump says there's no, no problem with it. Wait, is it part of the competition? Apparently. No. Yeah, yeah. Some of the preliminary or something. Really? Yeah. And what do they have? To, they fill it up with water and then blow up? They fill them up with water and, and then, or they blow them up, make them real big and pop them. Right, right. And it's just some kind of uh, a condom use awareness thing sure. that they were part of. Uh, so... Uh, I, I was asked about it, and I, I just said, you know, first of all, what what's what's a condom? <laughs> you know, because I'm always talking about how I just don't use condoms. Right. And uh, then it stopped right there in, in the show. It was a boom, a cut. Because after that, I said, I have no problem with this. I'm even willing to help them fill the condoms up myself if she just helps out a bit. To what? fill the condoms up myself was cut out. They didn't want me saying fill the condoms up myself now even though in it's that based context, on yes of course it's fine i'm not saying i want to put my cock in a condom well, and shove it in miss universe well you're kind of applying that but it's it's like yeah, it's yeah. that it's that famous double entendre double humor entendre that is uh done very well over the years exactly God. then another thing that got cut out th th dude i this is all the shit that was cut out mm -hmm. uh the first two things that i mentioned i wasn't able to to say and I didn't say, but this is shit that's cut out now. Um, who's this? Uh, Levy Levy Johnson is that his name? That fucking or Johnston? Levy Johnston, the the guy that was engaged to be married to Pelosi's uh, Pelosi. Who oh, shit? Hold what on. a difference that is. Palin. I'm distracted because I see ah, the yes. video of uh, one of the contestants blowing up the condom. Yeah. Wow, those condoms get pretty fucking big, huh? Dude, is that big? For a condom? <laughs> <laughs> hey, would, I believe we were from Arkansas. <laughs> why are you always paranoid that they're going to break? You see how big that fucking thing got? I think it was giant. I think we need this awareness. I <laughs> See? <laughs> this is a good thing. Uh, where, where was that video? TMZ? Yeah. I saw a TMZ logo on that one. Oh, oh it's on people? YouTube. Yeah. It's YouTube. It's everywhere. Okay. Oh, you yeah. can find it yourself. If you just Google news like condom, it'll be like the first thing. To All right, right on. Right on. Uh, so now this is stuff that you actually said that got cut on the show, but when you watched when it watched yourself, it, it, it was it, it was not it was there. Cut out. Yeah, it just wasn't there. It was an awkward cut. Uh, uh, Levy uh, Johnston, um, who was the guy that got uh, Palin's daughter pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, he apparently said he would pose nude in Playgirl. And the whole joke is the g girls don't even fucking look at Playgirl anymore. Right. Uh, guys... Look at Playgirl. There isn't even a paper publication of Playgirl. It's only online. Oh, really? Yeah. And it's it's completely gay. Like, no woman is looking at Playgirl. Did women ever look at Playgirl? I don't think so. I mean, when we were growing up, it was all about the Playboy, but you didn't have, like... <laughs> it's like, come, come on. <laughs> but, but you didn't have, like, the girls in your school, like, talking about Playgirl, Playgirl at all, all look, right? Look, a cock. <laughs> no. Yeah, they just weren't. The girls just don't. No, they they just don't look at us as like visually <laughs> like we look at them. Visually. No, we stare and, for the most and part. Jacket. I know there's women out there that do, but yeah, for yeah. the most part, you know. But especially in this day and age, you're not going to grab Playgirl if you're some chick. No, you, you just go online. You, you don't hear the stories of the chicks like trying to find the stash of Playgirls and then burying them in the woods. Yeah. At their tree fort. I found my mom's playgirls. <laughs> right, you don't... So I went out with the rest of the girls you know and we looked. I've never heard one of those stories. No. 
But you just walk around talking to like you know older guys, and everyone has a story <laughs> of finding the stash of Playboys. Oh, and you'd find everyone that stash of your dad's Playboys, and it See, would it would glow like the fucking suitcase in Pulp Fiction. <laughs> your dad had a had a, had a stack. Oh yeah, yeah. See, my dad didn't. So oh man, what was cool for me was having that friend whose yeah. father subscribed to Playboy. Great. And then you're getting to know like your new buddy, and he's like, oh yeah, my dad uh, subscribes to Playboy. I'm like, what? Really? Could we, dude? Could we look at him? Of course. Yeah, come here. And yeah. you're like, you start getting butterflies. Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh, I'm gonna see naked girls. It, Holy shit! I'm gonna see naked. It girls. was ridiculous. <laughs> Just knowing that that friend's father had yeah. had that stash. Like, oh, could, could we see him? When is he leaving to play golf? Yeah, could we see him? And where's mom? Oh, she's there? downstairs, uh, you know, making cookies. All right. Really and then you'd grab one. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why? Danny just found a picture of some naked guy swinging no, from a tree. No. Travis sent me this. Oh, oh Travis. Travis. Is that from the personal Travis collection? I would imagine. That looks like an anteater. <laughs> oh, nice abs. abs. He's got a hell of a cock on him. <laughs> At least his abs are real, unlike what's-his-name from yeah, Guar yeah. yesterday. <laughs> odorous. Odorous, Not right. like odorous abs. <laughs> odorous his abs made me laugh all <laughs> night long. It was hysterical. It was like he fucking put him in with charcoal. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's cool. We're, we're just yapping. Yep. Uh, uh, Levy Johnston, who is uh, the, yeah, the, the guy that knocked up Palin's uh, daughter, uh, he's, he's, uh, p wants to pose for uh, Playgirl. Well, the whole thing is, uh, what did I say? I said, of all the people in the Palin camp, it's the, the, if I made a list, he wouldn't even be on it as far as the people I want to see naked. And I said, I, I would love to see that daughter that he knocked up, though. They cut that out, huh. the daughter that he knocked up. Now, I know there was controversy uh, with Letterman right. about that, but he did knock the daughter up. Right. She was the older one. There's no confusion as to which one got knocked up. Right. So, uh, you know, just, that was the line. They, so they, they, they cut that out. Just nervous Nellie's trying to do edgy material. Yeah. I, I'm not talking about Greg and Andy Levy and the rest of them. No, it. no. The executives are working in a field where they're trying to get some edgy programming done, but they're nervous Nellie's. Yeah. How, does that, how just, is that ever going to work? Just real uh, little over safe. Little over safe going on, and there was something else they cut out. I, I believe I can't recall what it is, but um, I was watching, just kind of going, "Whoa, really?" Little over safe, and this is after the uh, talking to mm -hmm. uh, and me just not doing the lines that you know they said. Yeah, we kind of steer away from that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh man, come on, just let these let these guys do their show. And of course, oh, fucking. That's why I watch TV instead of do TV. <laughs> <laughs> I like to watch TV. And by the way, it, it finally explains my my Letterman appearance with uh, Anthony. It's not that I didn't talk a lot. My stuff was so racist. Oh, my God. <laughs> they, just they, just, they just cut every they word I had it. out of my appearance with how, Anthony. How many N-bombs did you drop oh, that I, 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 Jesus. I, 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 I can't count that high. Like a crazy person. I made uh, Michael Richardson look like a churchgoer. <laughs> Richards. Richards. Michael <laughs> yeah. Richards. It's still early. <laughs> Michael Richardson, I think, played in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? Oh, well. I don't know. <laughs> Let's say hi to Mike in Philly. Mike? How's that Yo, Michael guys, Vick doing? All right. Yo, you're talking about... All right. Or you're talking uh, about hey, you whatever. Just... You know, sometimes we like to kind of have a conversation like I'm we're all sorry. buddies. He doesn't want to. He's strictly business. No, the Eagles and the Jets played last night, so I'm just wondering if you're an Eagles fan and what you think about uh, Michael Vick. I'm an Eagles fan. And the way I look at it, Michael Vick didn't kill my dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's Philly. That he is Philly. Right on, Mike. All right, what do you got? Hey, we're, we're in the house one time. We're probably about 10 years old. The old man had his uh, Playboy smashed up in the drop ceiling. And I think it was the straw that broke the camel's back. Because we're sitting around watching TV, and the Playboys and every other penthouse found us. The whole ceiling caved in. It was like manna from heaven. Come on. <laughs> it's I like, swear, I swear there is a God. I've been dead 10 years this year. And uh, oh, I know how it is with your dad. I swear on his grave, that's what happened. Wow. Could you imagine? It's like, oh my God. <laughs> Could you imagine? This is a gift this is from heaven. God, a gift yeah. from God. Thank you, God. <laughs> That's a good one, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now he's listening oh, he's to himself. Listen to himself. Yeah, right. That's what you do. That's fine. You listen to yourself. Hi. So, what else is going on? I guess uh, they finally buried Michael Jackson last night. Did they? Buried Michael Jackson. Like a year? 
Uh, yeah, Jesus. about a year ago. Uh, dude. I don't know. Whatever. I, we don't really need the details, but he's finally in the ground. Well, uh, Liz Taylor was there. Al Sharpton. Al Sharpton. Oh, God. Of course, Al Sharpton. Barry Bonds. What the hell's he doing? Did he know Michael Jackson? Oh, uh, this guy has all sorts of info on Michael Richardson. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is worth oh, taking. This is the guy. He was right. a bad boy. Dan uh, in Albany. Go ahead. Yeah, what's up, folks? Yo, know, Michael Ray Richardson was thrown out of the NBA twice yep. for excessive cocaine abuse. <laughs> yep. He had a couple of domestic violence charges against him, and then he came up to Albany to become a minor league basketball coach and was run out of town after explaining to the media how he had big-time Jew lawyers that could help get him out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. Yeah, he was, he wow. was a one of a kind, this Michael Ray Richardson. He was an oh, amazing he player, too. Oh, Opie, he's still second all time in steals, but the guy was a maniac. Is he really second? Is he really second uh, all time steals? Cocaine! <laughs> Cocaine! <laughs> <fucking day. laughs> there you go. There's your Michael Richardson update. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. So wow. uh, the other thing from Red Eye you didn't you didn't mention about the uh the the uh the high school reunion. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the uh show, uh um uh, Andy asks me he goes, so Anthony, uh, you recently went to your high school reunion. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, yeah. I, go, I you know took a took an eighteen year old to it. I figured I was gonna be. I, I was the <laughs> what did I say? I said I was the ghoul of the ball or something, <laughs> just the creep. Right. And uh, and then he goes, oh, I, uh, someone said, oh, did she make it home all right? And I went home. And I said, started talking about how uh, now she's in a, a vault uh, in the basement of the compound. I'm gonna have her um, impregnated. And stuff like that, you know, kind of yeah, goofing on the the news story about the guy that. Uh, yeah, it's only the biggest news story right yeah, now. Yeah, and that part. So it goes. So did she make it home all right? I went home. Boom! Cut right there. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. So what, it's like, what is oh. the problem with saying that? It, I don't humor. know. I don't know what the problem is with saying no. She's locked in my basement. Yeah, just referencing a big news story. Yeah, goofy. I'm. I, you know something. She really isn't locked in my basement. Right. To have to explain it to people, is it? Are people going to be upset with that? It's it's uh, a you know a joke. I think Red Eye's in trouble. I don't. I don't. I I, I really I hope think they're not. on the. I think they're on the radar. Uh, they you are, never want to be on the radar. They are on the radar, which is a good thing if you're a show. You want to be on the radar. Well, I was going to say the opposite. Our best years. Yeah. When we weren't on the radar. Yeah, could do anything. I mean, it was it was the best years of our career. You listen to some of those <laughs> shows, and you years. you would swear, and you, we couldn't even do that on satellite, man. right? And that I was remember on regular radio. I remember bosses that were kind of smart. I think it might have been Bruce Mittman. He's like, "You guys are not on the radar yet." Yeah, and he was worried when that day would finally come. Yeah, and he would stay keep warning us, radar. "You're not on the radar. You're not on the radar. Stay off the radar. Yeah. Stay off the radar." And then, of course, uh, we told the whole city of Boston that the mayor died in a fiery car wreck. And guess radar what? Radar hit. We've been on the radar ever since. Yeah, and it's a different ever world. Ever since, <laughs> it's a different world. <laughs> we uh, actually, when we first got to New York, we were off the radar too. A little bit. Cause uh, a little bit. Yeah, we we got away with quite a bit of murder over there. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah. By the way, she was seventeen, not eighteen. People want to correct only you. for a couple of days. Okay, but they want which to is you. closer to eighteen than seventeen. Good point, Ed. Good point. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, getting back to Michael Vick, he's going to be able to play starting in week three. Oh, really? See, I thought he was able to play right away, and uh, I was wrong. I cannot week wait. three. He gets to officially be uh, reinstated in the NFL. You know what the ratings are going to be for the first game he actually plays in? That's ridiculous. That's televised. Of because let, let, let me tell you something. He is, I just to see. I will tune in just to see what the fans do. Uh, yeah, as far as goofing yeah. or, or or just taunting him yeah. about the dog thing. I'm not a fan of the Eagles. By any stretch. And, you know, I got a lot of roots in Philly these days. Yeah. I could take a peek at the Phillies. I could take a peek at the Flyers, 76ers, and Eagles. I could care less about. Yeah. But, man, every time the Eagles are on, I will watch that yeah, game. Yeah, now you're going to watch. I will watch every freaking, uh, you know, they're very down. They're very smart with picking them up. And your dumb Yankees won again. The fucking Yankees are great. They are on a tear. Fucking another double-digit game. 10-5 over the Blue Jays. Cranking, jacking that ball. They have hitting and pitching. It's fucking fantastic. They're uh, 
They're killing. Uh, I think uh, Boston, did Boffiston win last night, too? Uh, Boffiston. I think they did. Yeah, yeah Boffiston the Red, won. Red Sox also won, so. What are we, seven and a half games up, I believe. Yeah, you're, you guys um, are going to win the, you it's, know. It's, it's looking good. Yeah. I don't want any self-destruction. That ain't happening. Uh, and the poor Mets. Oh, my God. Enough about the Mets. Oh, by the way. Not those... enough about the Mets. They look like a pile of busted toys. <laughs> <They> just... <laughs> Remember we were talking about David Wright and his dumb helmet yesterday? Yes. Now... Hold on, I gotta go get the paper. Oh, Ooh, give me the, give get me, the, uh, get the paper, get the paper. Give me that piece of shit, the top one. Ah, you call it that, whatever. I call it a piece of shit paper. Not even good for a uh, toilet paper. Nope. But wouldn't let my bird shit on it. If nope. I had a bird. Let me see. Remember yesterday we were saying that uh, maybe we weren't the first ones. I thought we might be though. That David Wright's helmet looks like the Great Gazoo. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> Not today. Do they make a little animation? Wow, these Do papers. They... You know what? <laughs> these papers are the exact same paper. It's in the other paper. I thought it was in this paper. <laughs> the Daily News. Ah, there's Jorge. They're, They're not. Sada fucking cranked. They're just as bad as the other paper. Who am I kidding? Uh, let's see. Sorry about this. I'm just going to be on Fox Business News. No. Will you hear this deal, though? Fox Business Network. They're going to simulcast Imus. Yeah. But they're filling the screen up with all the business facts because it's prime time. Oh no, it's gonna be a little block. Of iron. Oh yeah, I'm a little uh, square and a uh, <laughs> bunch of numbers. Oh, what the hell is this, stupid? He will share the screen with rows and columns of business data yeah, yeah, and yeah, updates. Yeah. The bottom third of the screen and a wing down the right side will provide continuous oh, business shit. information. Said the spokeswoman. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he's going to be a little postage stamp on TV. What's uh, <laughs> uh, Yahoo doing? Uh, I'm going to look over here and see what uh, Google's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Google, baby. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to yeah. be a postage stamp. That's it. And I can't find this damn uh, thing. God, we've been rocking, too, and I, I had a stall to do this. Oh, wait. Was that his helmet? No, yeah, but it's, uh, I think it was, uh, Phil Mushnick. His, his helmet. Phil Mushnick? I think it might have been Phil. I hate Phil Mushnick. Could someone find this for me? What the fuck? What paper was find I reading? Find it for him. What paper was I reading? Maybe you had a different edition. Oh, okay. You ever, yeah, you give ever, me. You ever notice sometimes? You ever notice? I bet you that's what's happening. Sometimes happened. there's different editions of the paper. What the fuck? Uh, someone's saying it was Newsday that mentioned, uh. Oh, it was? The Great Gazoo. Might have been. Maybe it's one of those. I call it Snooze Day. Oh, God. Snooze Day is the uh, worst newspaper. Horrid. Have you seen this wrestling commercial yet? Uh, no. Oh, th all right. They, it. Damn it. It's Eric Gioi. Gio Gio How do you say that Italian name right there, Ann? Help me out. I don't know. Uh, 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 Eric Gioi. Gioi. -o. It's a political Gio commercial, and, mm. and to show his opponent... He shows old-time wrestling footage from, like, the early 50s. Really? Of a wrestler just spinning a guy in the ring by his legs so over and over again. Is he co-hosting on Saturday with, uh, <laughs> with, with, with Sam, Sam? <laughs> and, and Stryker? <laughs> Can't find that, huh? Let me say, uh, I think, it, give me the other papers. I think, I think Ant's right that it was a different... Different edition. Uh, Josh in D.C., what's up? Hey there, Josh. Oh, Hinsky. Hinsky with your best shot, guys. Yeah, Hinsky. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. Uh, and I think the reason that Fox or any other channel um, cuts out what you're saying is I don't think they want to be associated with you if for some reason you go ahead and do those things. Um, you, know, <laughs> yeah. if, you know, God forbid you abduct a girl. I mean, hey, props to you, but, you know, God forbid you do. Right. Uh, you know, they don't want to think, hey, this guy's associated with us, and now Fox News or MSNBC or whoever the hell it is, they're going to think, oh, my God, this guy said this on our show, and now we're going to get in trouble for it. I, and, and, you know, that's what it boils down to. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I, I, it's like, I, I, obviously, I'm not being singled out. It's right. uh, they just really don't want uh, they, they don't want to take those chances. The more popular a show gets, the less chances people want to take. Yeah. And the reason the show got popular in the first place is because of the chances. So it's exactly. like, it's a catch-22. It yeah. is. And, and even in, like, the workplace, if you make a joke about something, and obviously we know the workplace is way different than TV and radio, but the workplace, if I made a joke about abducting a girl, I'm going to be in psychiatric health for the next uh, Well, years. you'd probably be in jail. Uh, they they would arrest exactly you. Or in jail. 
Yeah, yeah this job, we could kind of make there. fun of things like that and abduction and things like that. But uh, if you're just in your cubicle mm. and you go, hey, I think I'm going to abduct that girl, <laughs> you, said, you're you get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, we, you're done. We do you're have a done. few liberties it's, here, I guess. Sure. Yeah, you guys should just, like, do your job with microphones in front of you. Yeah. Just walk around your <laughs> office and your cubicle with a microphone in front of you. I get away with a lot more. I have you guys on all the time, and I'm always worried you're going to say something that someone's going to get offended about. And it's yeah. almost like, but they're just making jokes. Yeah. They're just, they're just jokes. It's jokes. They're just jokes. We say uh, some horrific no, things on our show, and then we go to break, and you really have to put a filter on, because now you're seeing people in the hallway, and you want to just continue what you were doing yeah. on the air. Continue exactly. the, the joke. So I don't say hi to anyone. No. I kind of look down and walk around this joint because I just don't want to, you know, to get in trouble with that dumb human resources. So easy to. If I if I repeat anything you guys say, that that HR is going to come down on me and say, "Where did you hear that?" And then I'm going to say, "Well, oh, I don't know if you asked me." And the next thing you know, they're going to block SiriusXM from streaming in our office, and then I can't even listen to you guys. So yeah. it, it's it's just ridiculous. But but Ann, good job last night. Thank you, uh, sir. You're very welcome. Watch it out, guys. All right. And and because we're doing our radio show, I just want to say this: HR sucks a dick. Yes, sucks a dick here, sucks a dick at your workplace. I know, it is amazing. You know what? Just taking all the fun out of out of people's jobs. Yeah, we used to be uh, most fun. jobs. And it was harmless fun. Most jobs suck. They really do. Yeah, most people don't have fun at their jobs. I had a lot of sucky jobs before I, I got lucky and you know made, made something of myself with this radio thing. Horrible. Most jobs suck. People yeah. are nodding in their cars right now. Yeah. And then you got HR to make it just, just horrendous. Yeah, they're going to fucking, and they think they're making it a better work environment for everybody. That flirting got you through a work day. Oh, I don't, please. And, and, and most of the women that were getting their asses pinched, yep. they would agree. Yeah. In the end, they would agree. In the, in the end. Oh, every once in a while, someone took it too far. But because one one guy takes it too far, you need a whole department. Yep. A whole department to keep anything from being any fun at work. Remember, you you remember, went to work just to flirt. From 9 to 5, all you were doing was trying to get pussy. Just flirting. And Not even the, trying to get pussy. Sometimes it was just trying to see if you could. <laughs> right. Like, you even get close. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And then it just... And, and, you know, and maybe you weren't actually going to, like, take the pussy. Yeah. But it was nice to know that, whoa, hey, I, I got some game. There's some pussy over there <laughs> right. that I think I could get if I really worked at it. But that's, that's, that's okay. We'll flirt. Not no more. And then you used to uh, uh, get those Xerox copies of the jokes that everyone hung up in their cubicles. Mm -hmm. And they were, like, uh, racist and sexist and stuff like that. And now you, you can't you can't fucking do that. People can't even, like, ha hang up a flag. You always hear about that. Oh, she had to take the flag down from her cubicle because then this one wants to put up a Swahili flag. and mm. this one. So, you know what? Instead, we'll just make it so nobody can have a flag right. uh, in their cubicle. The or no one could have a joke or, or, or a picture of something. Or and, that'll, and that will be the downfall to our society yep. is listening to these, these just these minority, not minority yeah. people, the minority. The minority of people. That, right. That are offended by this, or or take it too far, right. or want want some kind of action taken against somebody because they're doing something. It and and it really is indicative of what this country is becoming. As far as they want everyone to be the same, like everyone has to be the the same. There's nothing, no more originality, mm -hmm. no more individuality. Uh, when you would decorate up your cubicle with things, uh, and I'm just using that as an example. It could be anything. It could be the guy at the garage with his snap-on toolbox that he'd lift up and you see the fucking hot chicks sure. uh, 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 pin-ups in there and or stuff. Or the centerfold from Playgirl in there. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> A little bush. Some bush. That was individuality. That was you personalizing your little area of the world that you had to fucking work in that day to make it just a little better. Mm. Maybe if you knocked your knuckles as you're fucking trying to take out that manifold bolt and, and you finally get let loose and bam, you whack your knuckles and you're like, motherfucker, and you turned around and just saw a bush. Mm -hmm. You saw that fucking nude in there. It made you feel a little better. It calmed better. you down a little bit, right? Right. I'm hoping there's some kind of guy out there that's going to start a business and brings it all back. Just bring it back. And, and when he's, like, interviewing people, he goes, look, we don't believe in human resources here. Yeah. Are you okay with a little pinch to the hiney? Because <laughs> it's going to happen in my you company. Know what? I wonder if you can do that. <laughs> uh, you know something? There are no lawsuits here. Right. You can't sue. Right. 
You can't, but you're going to, you're going to have to sign a contract. You're not going to be able to sue, but we're going to have a really good time. Would you be offended (laughs) if you walked into uh, work one day and I said, do you have a license for those guns? (laughs) Because you have very big tits. Uh, And you can't say anything. Right. You can't take it to anybody. You can't sue me. And. And every day at 3 o'clock, we will put our heinies on the copy uh, machine. Yes, we're all going to put our heinies on the copy machine. Yeah. And you have to press your tits on there. Yeah. And we're going to just laugh and hand them out to everybody. Right, because it's just fun for everyone. <laughs> and for for this, I'm even willing to pay a little more. Yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Like, you pay a little more, but but you can't say anything. Yeah, and we don't do casual Fridays here. No. We do thong Fridays. We do tea. Thong we Friday. do tea back Fridays. Tea back Fridays, where uh, you have to just walk around <laughs> with a thong on. Is that okay? Would you be good with that? I should have never uh, been confused by what paper the Great Gazoo thing is on. Yeah, is in. I'm getting killed, and I just want to acknowledge that. Oh no, Booby oh, sh- Man! I know what paper you were reading, <laughs> Denny's. <laughs> Your place. A lot of placemat jokes coming in. Can't get to all of them right now. Uh, uh, but the Great Gazoo, yeah, it was in Phil Mushnick's column. I, I, I'd like to think that, I guess maybe this one was too obvious, but there you go. What we were talking about yesterday. Oh, there it is, yeah. The David Great Wright. Gazoo. And then right next to him, a uh, picture of the Great Gazoo from the Flintstones. It really is similar. That is a big, dopey-looking helmet. Take your stupid helmet off, David Wright. <laughs> He's a scared. Go up, to, go up to that plate without a helmet on. He's a scared of the ball. Go the other way. Come on. <laughs> Come on! Yeah. All yeah, right. So, so it, it's just—it really is one of these things of just doing away with people's individuality, and I don't think people realize that's what it's doing. Mm-hmm. It's making everyone the same, and it gets it. You know, you could even take it as far as the whole political climate these days, where they want everyone to have the same health care, the same this, the same pay, the same. It. It's like no. It's not what this country's about. Mm-hmm. We're all we're all very individual in this country, Absolutely. and that's what made it great. So let's. Stick to that. Some people are perverts. Some people are very smart. Some people are extremely stupid. Some people are prude. Some people are perverts. Let's all work together and embrace the differences. Like you said, the pinch on the ass. Maybe the girl doesn't like it. Let her turn around and go, don't fucking pinch my ass. Ah, Most girls like it, though. Oh, they love it. They go home going, all right. Just start pinching the girls' asses in your <laughs> yeah, workplace <okay>. and uh, <laughs> see see who likes it and who doesn't. <laughs> Let's say hi to Jason in Illinois. Jason. Yeah. Hey. Um, my wife came home with this story last night. She took uh, her mom out to eat, and uh, they had taken their, be my niece, granddaughter, their granddaughter, and she was in the back seat with their dog, and she's like, Grandma, your dog doesn't love me like my dog does. And Grandma says, well, why is that? Well, he won't lick my hoo-hoo. <laughs> Turns what? out the dog is her dog at home. She's five. Oh, my God. Oh. And she... So, <laughs> yes. She told... So Grandma had to investigate, and yeah. apparently it's been licked a little bit raw. Are you kidding me? Oh. No, I'm not. Wow. So... I had to tell somebody, and it's not like this is a story you can just tell it. Oh, by the way. <laughs> how, did the, how did the kid figure that out? I don't know. Well, the, the, yeah, the dog, dog figured would, it out. Uh-huh. Yeah, the dog. Apparently, if she has her underwear on, the damn thing will like. No, I, I understand what you guys are saying. It. The dog figured it out. But then the kid also figured it out, if yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. I no, mean, dogs she, come a-sniffing and doing their thing. But if you if you don't understand what that's all about or you're not yeah, into it, said. guess what? It's and only going to happen one time. And saying the dog doesn't love me like the dog at home right, right. means that, like. She really figured it she out. She sees that as being something that's, you know. Wow. Yeah. That, that's crazy. Grandma said, well, why? Why would you let him do that? And she's like, because it feels good. Oh, boy. Uh, That's uh, damaged goods already. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> good luck. Good Thank luck you, Jason. That's, that's a phone call today. Yeah. By the oh, way, we, we told everyone we'd bring back uh, line of the day after break. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting killed on Twitter. We got to bring that back. Oh, Not today. We'll, we'll bring it back next week. We'll start fresh next week. This was just a goof week. Yeah, yeah. This is goof week. <laughs> We, it's not to be taken seriously. We're just warming up again. It's a goof. Getting the, the rhythm back. Let's say hi to Brian and PA. Brian. Brian. So, uh, you, you made a great joke before about when the guy opens his toolbox and there's a play girl in there and you start giggling and, 
Auntie just spit all over it. He didn't even acknowledge you. Oh, I missed it. What I what I what I miss? You, you uh, Aunt uh, Opie oh, said the people decorating their own workspace, and the guy opens up his toolbox and he goes, and there's a picture from Playgirl in there. Right. And Opie just started laughing, and you started ranting. Yeah. About oh, you said Playgirl? Yeah, <laughs> I, I it, it was that. it was a callback. <laughs> but this guy brought uh, another guy on the phone's like, you said Playgirl instead of Playboy. No, I meant to say Playgirl. Yes. It was a callback. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. I good, missed. Good joke. Good joke. All right. Thank you, sir. I missed that. Let's go to Elizabeth in New Hampshire. Elizabeth. Yeah. Hey, boys. Hey. Uh, I just wanted to say I work in an um, in a large office space, Ooh. and I have an internal window, kind of facing, uh, you know, not external. And um, I tried to put up a cute little stained glass window with a daylily in it, and I've been asked to take it down because they're concerned I was going to sexually harass someone if I had the door shut because it was a little bit opaque, so you couldn't see in, so someone would feel threatened by me. Oh. Are you shitting me? Is, no, I'm not kidding. They want complete transparency so that you can't hide and sexually harass somebody? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, anyone who has any shades or anything to try to get some privacy so as not to see the distraction of thousands of people walking about <laughs> yeah. are also required to take those down as well because the same reason you might you might feel intimidated or harassed if look you're sitting in the office. <laughs> look where we've come. Amazing. Oh my God, where we can't even have a little bit of privacy just to, to keep the distractions away so you can do your job better. It's really sad, and just an, on a sort of a separate note, but also HR, I had uh, broken my foot and uh, had a cast on. When I got it off, I had to wear tennis shoes around the office for a few weeks. I had to get a note from my doctor saying I needed to wear tennis shoes so that I wasn't violating their policies. So it is a little carried away. <sighs> Friday will be Hawaiian shirt day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there you go. That's what we've become, Elizabeth. Thank you. Exactly. Thanks, boys. Talk All right. Out. Yep. You know, there's something to be said about being able to, you know, fuck off during work hours. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Like when you're, I mean, look at this joint. I mean, every yeah. office is a glass office. So glass everywhere. I mean, so you have to look like you're working the entire time you're in this building. Yep. No one has eight hours of work. No. But the boss is <laughs> like, if they, they hired you, they want you to work the entire eight hours. Yeah. But the, re the reality is you don't have eight hours of work every day. So, no. so you take a you take a little time to check Facebook. Yeah, just a little time. The uh, are they banning Facebook at work yet? Not here. Uh, no, of, of course that's not. All here. I ever see is people on Facebook. On Facebook. Oh, really? <laughs> that's all I see. <laughs> but, but I would so imagine true. that's the next thing in the regular uh, workplace. Oh, there have been workplaces that where, have done that where yeah. they're banning the Facebook websites yep. because you know there are some workplaces that uh, have complete control over uh, the internet in the workplace. And um, wow, they you can't you can't do anything on it. They don't get it. Can't go to certain websites because that makes your employees a a, a bit miserable, a angry. Yeah, you get that chance to just you know check uh, some statuses on your Facebook and whatnot. Yeah. It helps you, puts a little pep in your step. Does it? And then you go back to work. Well, I think the advent of the computer in the workplace has kind of stopped the. Um, the uh, other fucking around that you used to do, which is kind of, you know, water cooler talk. No one talks at the water cooler. Mm -mm. You, you just you want to get back to your computer and do whatever you're doing online, looking at porn, checking, doing your Facebook, whatever it is. But uh, I guess it used to be that used to be the time that was spent trading those Xeroxes and and pinching girls' asses. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, uh, the old like like the old. um uh, bewitched, like like where where Darren used to work at, at Larry Tate's office. I just picture Larry Tate and Darren just pinching ass and making tit jokes and everything, having sex in yeah, the supply yeah. closet. That's exactly the type of atmosphere where they're just yeah, give me a double. They're drinking at the job and just talking tits. <laughs> That's just the kind talking of thing. tits and ass. The old sixties office. But yeah, look there it is. All right, yeah, get in here. Get on that dictaphone. <laughs> Just saying dictaphone now will get you thrown out. You know what sucks? Like <laughs> Companies now have to hire ugly secretaries. Yeah. yeah that because... job that job was always for the piece of ass. Yep, the sexy secretary. Because what does a secretary, secretary really do? She, but now, uh, because, you yeah. know, we're politically correct and this and that, you, mm -hmm. you see ugly secretaries everywhere. Or guy secretaries. Oh. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Yeah, because there was always the uh, a lot of the sitcoms back in the '60s and stuff had the the wife.
that would be angry when she'd go to work and uh, uh, go to drop something off to the husband and meet the secretary yeah. and she was hot. Yeah. She'd be like, well, what's up? Because she knew shenanigans was going on. You guys are so insensitive. Oh, Seriously. really? Does anybody even say secretary anymore? It's executive assistant. Oh, is that okay. it? Yeah, of course. You can't secretary. Even call them, you can't even call them secretaries. That's like calling somebody a stewardess. Right. A I, sexy stew. I always found it funny when I was interviewing and you, you, you go to the, you go to the workplace and you see that hot piece of ass that was like the boss's assistant. You're like, okay. Because you know the boss hired this person. Of course. <laughs> and you're she like, can't oh. do anything. It's, it's so obvious. It's just his type. <laughs> it's just his type. He hired his type. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good typist. He hired his type. And, and you know damn well there were plenty of other qualified women. Of course. That weren't his type. No. Maybe it was a brunette. Maybe, yeah. maybe it was a flat so. Right. Or, or what not. <laughs> Uh, David Wright pushed out, didn't wear the helmet last night. Okay. Oh. There's an update from Nick on Long Island. If uh, Red Eye, getting back to the Red Eye thing, Aunt, Kevin yeah. and Philly, if Red Eye were animated, you would have been fine. Yeah, it's hard to hold cartoons accountable. Um, Why is that? <laughs> I don't know. Because people are voicing the cartoons. Yeah, and people write them and draw them and, and write the, the, the content. But for some reason, the cartooniness... Is a buffer. Mm. It makes it so you could really get away with murder uh, as far as content goes, but not be held accountable. Because you look silly if you're if you really make a, a cartoon an issue, whether it's racial, sexual, whatever. Uh, you look silly. <laughs> you just it, it, because people that will then go, "Come on, it's a cartoon." You watch. Yeah, that's where they go next. I don't know. It's you been, watch because they tried with South Park when it first. Well, the success came out of South Park, the success of Simpsons Family Guy, the Simpsons, uh, the Simpsons a little bit. Now that means more cartoons are going to go down that road, and you watch. It's going to be an issue. Now, when the Simpsons first came out, there was a big to do about um, Bart's language, and then that episode where Bart got a tattoo that was like a big deal. And, uh, I remember, there was I remember the T-shirts because it would say like underachiever or something. Yeah, and like yeah. the like I guess some groups got all, uh, you know, in a in a, a tizzy, tizzy because that's like the wrong message to send. Yeah, to the kids. wrong message. Eat like, my you know, shorts was yeah. like a, a huge thing that they didn't want the kids saying and repeating. You know, so they did catch a lot of shit, and that was how long has the Simpsons been on? <laughs> Twenty years. Twenty years. Twenty fucking years. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is going to sound sacrilegious, but uh, I never got into the Simpsons. That's I have to. Really I have to say. I, I never really got into it. I watched from time to time. I even I even bought a box set and went and and started watching. Going, what what did I miss? Maybe I should watch this again. I never really got into it. It depends what seasons you get because yeah. like the the early ones were really more like kids shows than you know for adults. Mm -hmm. And then the later seasons, like maybe the past I guess five or six years, it's been nothing but yeah. you know celebrity guests and stuff. But I know. That, that middle chunk of the Simpsons when uh, actually when Conan was writing for them, yeah. that was like. That was like the golden age of The Simpsons. Like that was really the best good. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I didn't hate it, but I I wouldn't go out of my way to watch it. But as far as Family Guy goes, yeah, when Family Guy is on TV, even though I have every DVD, I will watch every episode that's in front yeah. of my face that's on live TV. I will stop every time. I have a box even if set. I even if I've seen that episode a yeah. bunch of times. I have a box set with like the first like five or six seasons. I I don't think I've ever put a disc in, but every time it's on TBS, I leave it on. If it's on Cartoon <laughs> yeah. Network, I leave it on. And at this point it's on all the time. Yeah. Family Guy, you could pretty much find around the clock. Yeah, almost, they are, they're they're syndicated to I think uh PIX yep. now here in New York. Yep. And and they uh they caught a lot of heat too with the fucking digital ass crack that they had to do when they had to pixelate mm -hmm. um the uh, ass cracks in Family Guy and right, it's like so things do. They do kind of pick on the cartoons, but not as badly. They don't feel like the cartoon is going to get fired. Yeah, <laughs> you know what it is. It's like okay, the cartoon isn't going to get fired. Right, but when you do something on a radio show or, or a TV show, you're like, I could get fired for saying. Of this. course, and South Park, same thing. I, yeah. I always love South Park. Even yeah. when they had a couple of years there where they, you Ugh. thought they were done, Reverend and then they made a good. huge comeback, South yeah. Park, uh, wherever now. <laughs> hey, by the way, Ant, we're behind the times. Uh, Facebook is being blocked all over the fucking place. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the instant feedback in the phones have just exploded. Facebook is blocked not only on my work PC, but also my work BlackBerry. Really? Wow. That's Phil. That's Phil? That's just stupid. More stupidity. Yeah. That's why I can't deal with anyone that wears a tie. They're just dumb thinkers. Yeah. You know what they I would think do? think it cuts down on productivity. Okay. 
All right. Yeah, but it also, you know, drops morale. Yeah. People love their Facebook. We're living in an era where people want to check their Facebook almost every hour at this point, okay? Mm -hmm. What you do if you're a cool boss, remember the cool teacher that brings you outside? <laughs> remember there was only one and the rest of them were stuffy assholes? Of course. But one guy would go, you know what? It's fucking 85 degrees in January. We're going outside today. Yay. And we're going to sit around a dumb apple tree, and we're going to learn maybe for 10 minutes. And the rest of the hour, we're just going to enjoy the nice day. Mm -hmm. I love those guys. It brought morale up. And guess what? You, you, you studied a little harder for that class. There was some kind of appreciation. Yeah. What I would do as a boss, it's really simple. You don't ban Facebook. Maybe, maybe there's a way where... You pay attention how long they're on Facebook, mm -hmm. and maybe you make some kind of weird limit where I'll give you I'll give you two hours a week or whatever it would be, whatever makes sense. And that maybe they could because they're checking our email, they're checking everything we do as soon as we walk into the workplace. Now look at all the cameras around here. I know they know your every step, yes, so they they're already checking your shit. So they they can put some kind of program in place where they go, all right, we will allow you to check your Facebook for a certain amount of time per week. And that's it. And then you're conscious of that, so you're checking quickly, keeps your morale up, and then you're you're doing your job for the, the asshole. They just see it as loss of productivity. That's what they see. They don't look at morale or anything. It's like a Sims game, though. If you look at it, it's like a Sims game. If you take certain things away, people have the grumpy thing right, over right, their right. head, right. and then they don't do as much work. <laughs> They're just hiring robots at this point. Yeah, Robots. Again, you know it's... that little chit-chat in the hallway? You know, that, that kind of made you... Get through your day, made you yeah. kind of, like you said, kept your morale up. Yeah, a little, uh, But now you're boost. paranoid to do a little chit-chat in the hall. Oh, no, just stay in your cubicle and make believe you're working for eight straight Not hours. only that, you're afraid to talk because what you say might be in a, uh, deemed inappropriate. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, a boss might see you talking and say, why aren't you working? It, right. It's just become, yeah, get in, sit down, do your fucking job, or make it look like you're doing your job. Who didn't take a two-hour lunch? Oh, Because you could. You True. can't anymore. They're clocking you as soon as you come back in. They got they got all these electronic gadgets. I hate this thing, by the way. Oh, the little It drives cards. me fucking Beep. nuts. The beepy cards I have to beep for every, every door. Time, every time I go through a door in this facility. The beepy cards for the beepy doors. I don't know, man. I think I think I think life has just passed me by. Yeah. I can't I can't handle this stuff for I don't real. Like all this uh No. Tech. What does it take to get into the studio? Think about it. Yeah. What, we have to go through two security guys. We have to go through the uh, the the. Uh, I'm the going turns. into a uh, I'm going into a ball game turnstile. Turnstile, and and you got to use your BP card. And then I have to use this card twice. Yeah, yeah, to get just to get in past the guard and, and then hit the other thing. And then as soon as I get in, then I'm on camera. The and whole you're on time. camera the whole time. <laughs> Everywhere you walk, you're on camera. <laughs> we really have entered a weird time. <laughs> what does it all mean? You can't get away with shit anymore. <laughs> Prove that this is making people work harder. When when I worked, Prove it to me. When I worked at uh, True Mechanical, another uh, air conditioning company before Apollo. The famous uh, Apollo. Yes. I worked at True Mechanical, and there was a bar next door. And the whole shop, I, used to, I worked in the shop, you know? Mm -hmm. And the, the shop foreman and all the workers, every fucking day would go to the bar next door and drink and play the horses at the OTB that was next door to the bar uh, for about an hour and a half mm -hmm. and then walk back to work with a little, you know, sure. little booze in us sure, and get on immense pieces of moving machinery yeah. <laughs> and handle a sheet metal. How many injuries? And bend it. For real. Every so often you'd cut yourself or you'd it was worth it. bang yourself with a machine or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but... Yeah, no, no missing fingers or anything. But the the, the thing is, the boss kind of knew what we were doing, but just left it alone. Right now, they, you know, you'd be punching out cameras here, security doors, locks. They wouldn't let you do that. Liability, this, that. They should, they should go. They should deal with just percentages. Yeah. If one guy lost his arm because he was a little drunk when he went back to, on the job, ah, 
Depends on how many people work there. You chalk it up to, well, we're going to lose an arm every once in a while, but look at all the fun right. we've had. If you only have two people working there and one person loses the arm, maybe could a be a problem. Right. <laughs> but every, every time there's some kind of tragedy, then everything has to change. This Hudson River thing is a joke. I know. Yeah. They've been flying over the Hudson River, helicopters, jumbo jets, private planes, all sorts of shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. For years and years and years and years. No problems. The mm -hmm. Sully thing, that's, that, you know, that's one of those. A fluke. Uh, that was a fluke. Unf there was an unfortunate, as we know by now, helicopter and, uh, and plane crash over mm -hmm. the Hudson. Now all the rules have to change. Everything changes They don't even now. acknowledge all the years where nothing, nothing happened. happened whatsoever. Y y nothing yeah. happened. You get that many things buzzing around the sky. Occasionally they're going to bounce into each other. But you get this dumb, ch I think Chuck Schumer had to jump on oh, this one. Of course he did. You know. Old. Oh, we got we to, gotta, like, yeah. you know, make... Make uh, the airspace safe. It was safe. It oh. was an unfortunate incident that happened. Horse out of the barn, Schumer. After the fact, he so, jumps on everything. So now there's all sorts of new rules in place for the Hudson River. If yeah. you're flying uh, over that. Like you have to put in a flight plan now. You can't fly uh, around. Because people used to just be able to, on a clear day, uh, you can see forever. On a clear day, you used to be able to just take off from like Republic Airport mm -hmm. in a light plane. Um, you'd have to tell the air traffic uh, controllers wh where you're going and what you're doing, but uh, you could do a couple of laps around the city, whatever. Now, yeah, nope. file a flight plan, be here, stick to an altitude, do Listen this. Listen to this, do this, blah, 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 used blah, used to be blah. visual. You would just kind of look around and go, okay, I can see what's going on. <laughs> I'll just look. <laughs> and the odds of two things in the air crashing. I, I know. It's Think about that one. And by the way, they're not will on the never same. be flying cars because of that. Oh, of course. Like, like people think it's going to be, brrr, no. we're just flying around in flying cars. No. <laughs> it never happened. Uh, wow. God, where do you go? Phone's lit and some feedback lit. I had a 42-minute lunch at a greeting card company. <laughs> what? Nice. Oh, let's say hi to Tony in Cleveland. Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey, boys. How you doing today? Hey, All right, man. Yeah, we worked at American Greetings Card Company. My lunch was at t from 12.18 to 1 o'clock. So you, I start getting ready at 12.15. They look at you like you're going to take their kid or something. 12.18? Yeah. What the fuck is that about? To 1. I don't know, man. It was so bad. I had to get out of there. It's brutal. Brutal there. That's nothing but trying to put one over on you. Yep. It's, it's like a, a dominating thing. Yep. They want to... They want to dominate you. <laughs> we are, we're talking to a lot of bosses right now. Yeah. Lighten up. You suck. Be the cool <laughs> boss. Can't be the cool boss. Don't be, don't be jumping down one of your, one of your employers, employees' uh, throats if he's 10 minutes you know, late from lunch or something. Maybe every day. They, they say, you know what the bosses would say? Well, you give them an inch, they take a mile. Yeah. Bah, bah, really? bah, bah, bah. Give them a hand, they take the whole arm. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. Really? Cody in Indiana. There was a restaurant that we used to go to when we were younger, and there were always a bunch of hot waitresses there. And we'd always say, hey, Bill, what the, what do you hire these girls based on? He goes, the lap test. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what and, is the lap test? <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, but that restaurant's out of business. Later, boys. <laughs> All right. The, the lap, lap test, test sounds good. Remember the dog story with Denise? Oh, yeah. We missed a good line. Max in Fairfield. What's up, Max? What's going on, guys? Hey, man. Hey, um, yeah, that guy with the five-year-old should really check the grandfather's closet to make sure there isn't a dog suit hanging in there. <laughs> oh, shit. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the coolie hole cut out. <laughs> uh, let's say how to Stryker. Not the Stryker that will be well, no. co-hosting with Sam and E-Rock. Unfortunately the, not. The big wrestling weekend is almost here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got in trouble? You got in trouble? For what? How do you get in trouble? Because we're just... We're going to have to figure this out. Are you serious? I want to hear all the details. Oh, we'll, we'll hear during the break. Okay. How do you get in trouble? Because we're goofing on something. <laughs> like, Danny's freaking out right now. He's doing the what, safe. You're... He's doing... He looks like an ump going, safe! Please tell me they came safe. to you and said, you you should be the one that controls these guys. Because we've heard that over the years. shitting me? we uh -huh. Dude. Once again... What? We started the show by talking about jokes and sarcasm. My God. Let me man. go on record and, and tell everybody I love the WWE and what they've done for us over the years. Look, dummies, here's the deal. We have been in a relationship with WWE when they were WWF, okay? 
We know them. We adore working with them. They know our sense of humor. That's why they fucking advertise with us. That's why they send people over here. They know us. You they know, love when we talk about them, no matter if it's good or bad or funny or fucking whatever. They loved us so much that Vince McMahon personally hired us for that horse shit, uh, the XFL. What a piece of dog <laughs> shit that was. But he personally called us and said, I'm doing this XFL thing and I need you boys. Then he said, you're fired. Yeah, we know that you're a fired thing personally. We certainly do. We fuck it, and we know that they can take the joke. Holy shit. Come on, lighten the fuck up. So I'm going on record. Yeah, we love the WWE and the WWF. Yeah. We wouldn't have their horseshit wrestlers on our show <laughs> <laughs> if we didn't like them. They're horseshit wrestlers. <laughs> oh, my God. You know how many people we don't have on our show because we don't exactly. like them? We don't respect them. We don't get it. I want to know. You're, you never hear about those people because guess what? We just say no, 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 no. The people we say yes to for our show, that means we are interested in them and we think yeah. they'll uh, they'll do good radio. And it's the magic. <laughs> do you let me let me let me let me make something clear here also. Mm -hmm. How many times have we been approached to buy sales with a product that they've said is there a way you can incorporate this into just you and the show? Right. Like to make it not sound like a commercial, but to like just incorporate it into your show naturally. Right. And it's some product. There's no fucking way we'd ever be able to do that. Right. That's what we've been doing with the WWE. We talk about it in a way. And I want to I want to know something, Danny. I want to know something. Did the WWE contact the 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 uh, uh, serious and say, shut those guys up. They're they're saying things about the product. Or was it someone from sales that went, or was it management that said, uh, uh, we don't want you talking like that about that? Because if it's WWE, then fine. Then we got to shut up. That's the sponsor. Uh, we should shut up. Uh, Danny will talk during the break. But he's scared. They scared if it's him. somebody from here that got they no got word from WWE, they got them. See if then Danny they should just shut the fuck up and let us talk about him. They got to Danny. See if he has a scar. WWE loves when we talk about them. They don't care if it's fucking goofing on them. That's what they goof on themselves. Look at Vince. He's a complete ass. Please be quiet. <laughs> it's Friday. I want to go home on time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading that. Uh, Listen. What are you doing later, man? I Drinking a lot. All right. <laughs> but I will. Come on over. I will guarantee, guarantee you this, and this is why I got to run a company oh. someday. Someday. I guarantee Jeez. all that negative talk we did about what we're doing this weekend on 202. Yes. And goofing on Sam and goofing on the WWE and all and, that and whatnot. And Striker. <laughs> More people know about uh, what they're promoting, the, the classic wrestling right. thing. And more people will be checking out the wrestling program yes. that is happening this weekend on our channel. We I guarantee that. I know that's, that's hard to wrap your mind around. Yeah. But we brought so much attention to it that more people know about it. <laughs> that what shit works. Trust me. We have incorporated it organically, as they like to say, into our no, program. No, what is it called? It's called... Uh, it's called... Yeah, it's got a word. Uh, it's got some stupid sales Integration. Word. Synergy. Synergy and integration. Yes. Synergy we have, sucks a dick. We have integrated it into the program organically in a way that... People just think we're whoa, talking. Whoa, 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 After we let it bake for a while, and then we blue-skied it. Yes, blue-sky you know, it. All these corporate terms that mean uh, nothing. Do you understand how that works? See, I'm cool. We're doing exactly what you want us to do with a product. Right. I'm Holy a, mother of fuck. I'm a cool corporate guy. I come up with stuff like, let it bake, and let's blue-sky that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Liquid ass rules. <laughs> I, oh, <laughs> I like what ass rules. I love Guinness. Yep. I hear there might be something going on with Guinness. What? Uh, uh, with us? Uh, with, with me. Oh, with a live from the compound? Could be a little tasting of um, a little payola some of this 250. Nice. No. I've been doing that plug old it's payola for, plug old for a long payola. time. It's about time you get involved. It's, it's, I, I want to be able, I want to be um, the shit able I get to talk about the product. So we might uh, uh, be able to taste some of this. 250 year anniversary Guinness. This shit. Mm. I've been getting shit for free for years, my friend. Just by talking about it, it's awesome. <laughs> you can't say that. Oh, no, you have awesome. Haven't. Now I'm stepping in. <laughs>
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> I'm you with my tie. I have to stop you. <laughs> you should see my furnished apartment. I yeah. haven't paid for shit. All right, hold on. <laughs> I haven't paid for shit. Just make believe you like a certain product, and uh, man, the UPS uh, man comes a calling. <laughs> hey, you know who has great furniture? Crate and Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, look. What? Uh, do you see what I'm holding up? You see my brand new car? My you red, think I paid for that? Yeah, flag, right. Are flag. you kidding me? Red flag. I haven't paid for shit. Oh, Jesus, please. <laughs> no, God, help me. <laughs> see, that's called sarcasm. Uh, <laughs> that's the theme of today's show. Exactly. Sarcasm and jokes. God. Uh, God, I can't believe they don't got that. I can't wait to hear who fucking brought this up. Now, was it... WWE or management? It was not WWE, right? See, Travis is shaking his head. No. WWE would be the it only... It was fucking management, and Danny didn't say it. There's another person giving me some, some sign language. Yeah. And now that person disappeared, so no one else could see who just did that. So now yeah. it's it's just me and the person that helped me out. If it was WWE, that's we why... would then stop. All right, listen. That's why... When 10.30 hits, mm -hmm. we take a quick left, a quick right, a quick jog down the hall, another right, elevator's waiting for us, we're out of here. We look like when the roadrunner is coming down the street. You don't get street. it. <laughs> That's what it looks like when we leave. Like the roadrunner. <laughs> Plus, you know what? I'll tell you this much. The WWE owes us a, a, a few things. You're damn straight they do. You know how much free advertising we've given these guys over Hell the years? Hell yes. We've talked to those fucking dolts. For years. <laughs> it, it was management, and let it be known, it was not Danny. Uh-huh. Who's uh, nope. usually the troublemaker. No. <laughs> Fucking Mars. That's who it was. Mars is the rat. Mars is the rat. Wait to hear Mars's promo. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. <laughs> yeah, we got some goods. Where's Sam today? Maybe we can play this going in a break. Because uh -huh. I, I see Mars. Hello, Sam. Oh, hey, There's hey. Samuel. What's How's up, Sam? Not too much. By the way, Sam... I got very good news for you. What's oh, that? 42 okay. days until Fur Fry 2000. Fur gonna, Fright. And how many blue God. fucking uh, dragon pictures did you get yesterday? A lot of blue dragon pictures, actually. A huge amount. And, you know, <laughs> years spreading blue. it. And, <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh. Coolie hole? Yeah. I, no, yeah. I said coolie hole earlier, and yeah. it made me, reminded me of coolie hole. what we were discussing over the past mm -hmm. week. Uh, Jimmy James, Sam. Oh, you doesn't has to come. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's the same guy. He works in construction, You're, and he's trying to tell me that uh, we got to go to this call. H hold on, Sam, because I want to okay. get into what Mars did. Uh, that they're track. He works a, a construction job, and they're yep. tracking him. How are I, they tracking construction? I've, I've heard this started happening after I, I got out of construction, and I thought that was the last cool job where yep. you could get away with murder. Nope. I used to have a truck. Uh, remember, I used to take my Apollo van everywhere, right? And I had a, a thing on the back that said, "How am I driving?" or uh, uh, and then I would have a number that you would call, and I changed the number with electrical tape, so I'd be able to drive around like an ass, and no one would know uh, the better. That's now brilliant. GPS is on every one of these fucking vehicles. They know where you are. They used to. What? It used to be this. This is what I used to get. Uh, base to sixteen. Base to sixteen. I uh, sixteen to base. What's up? Uh, yeah. What, what's your location? Oh uh, yeah, I'm still. Uh, uh, I'm just uh, pulling up to the job site. I'll uh, be. Uh, I'll I'll call you later. Okay. And then it'd be like I'm nowhere near the job site. <laughs> You're I'm at a boat ramp. Out. I'm at a fucking. You're yeah, at a boat. I'm ramp. at a boat ramp. I'm at a tit bar. I'm somewhere. Uh, and what did it matter if you got the job done? Yeah, the job was at done. At the end by of the way. day, you got the job done. Right. And if you didn't get the job done, if you weren't able to figure out how to go to the uh, you know the the titty bars and yep. go to the liquid happy hours or the liquid <laughs> lunches. And uh, and check your Facebook and pinch the ass of the hot chick at work. For the as long as you boat ramp, <laughs> as, you had to juggle all that stuff and also get your job done. Because guess what? If you didn't get your job done at by, at the end of the day, you yeah. were gone. Yeah, you're gonna get. So fired. what does it matter if you're able to juggle checking Facebook and all this other shit? Then the boss should just leave you alone. Here's something you'd never hear: uh, sixteen to base. Uh, base, go ahead, sixteen. Yeah, I finished the job. Can you send me to another one? <laughs> it just wasn't going to happen. Right. And if I had nowhere to go, I would just stretch the one job they gave me out of to, to, like, finish of the day. Of course. But if I could finish the job by noon and get the fuck out of there, right. that's what I'm doing. Of course. Jimmy, what are they doing in the construction world? Hey, boys. Hey, just one quick thing on the WWE, too. Isn't this the same company that had on live television an 80-year-old woman give birth to a hand? Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. So they, I think they might get, like, jokes and edgy shit. Yeah. 
They don't take themselves too <laughs> you know seriously. And if they don't, I don't, I don't, we don't need them. Vince's ass got buffed. Right. On, 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 on <laughs> right. television. Right. I don't think they really take themselves all that seriously. Right. Uh, what do you got? Uh, well, uh, they, like Ant was saying, every vehicle now has GPS. And uh, they know if you actually, during your you know, a break, you go in and just turn the key to listen to the radio while you're eating. They know. They know how long you're listening. You know, they can track you there. If you're driving to the job and you exceed, you know, 75 miles an hour. They know the speed phone ri- limit. Phone rings. Oh. Yep, phone rings. Uh, you're going too fast. And well, they know you if you're driving off hours. Emergency job. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah, it, it, it doesn't stop in the office. That's uh, I actually left an office job, you know, in the, in the tech industry to go to construction because I couldn't stand being in high school again with the office politics. <laughs> And it just follows you. It, the world's gone. Dude, Dang. you can't even drive your, your your company truck like after hours. You know, you take it out every so often. And, yeah, oh. which would be free advertising for them if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, right. it's doing them a town. favor. It's doing them a favor drinking I, and driving their vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think people listening to us around our age, we we have seen a drastic change. Like the like the the, the kids calling the kids, ah, the kids. Co- coming up now and going to work for the first time. They don't know any better, so I guess they'll just. Accept it, live with it, which is scary to think. Yeah, we've seen some unbelievable changes in the workplace. Used to be able to get away with a lot more. And, and by the way, all that shit we're, we're not allowed to do anymore at the workplace. I guarantee the bosses are still doing all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I course. guarantee oh, yeah. their computers are still able to check their Facebook pages. That's their I guarantee it. Well, and I uh, hope oh, what you said about the kids coming up. Yeah, they don't they don't know any better. I remember, you know, you, you've got to you get a new helper. And you gotta, you gotta treat them nice. Oh you God! You gotta coddle them along. I remember when I came in, and if I did something wrong, I cut a piece of pipe wrong. I had ten foot six of pipe coming flying back at my head yeah. from the top of a twelve foot ladder. And God I, and damn, I just, he's right. I just grabbed it and walked back. And oh, I'll do that again. I don't know how many times I was called like a fucking retard. It's like, what are you a fucking retard? What did you do? Oh, you can't it's do like, that. It's like no, anymore. I was I was trying to do get the fuck out of here. Let me do this. Get out of here. Right. Go back to the yeah, truck and fucking steam. Yeah, go back to the truck. Put some fucking gas in the generator, you you dummy. Yeah, you can't do that. Oh, and then when I started getting helpers, when I you know got to the point where I I had to get helpers and pick them up at the fucking park and ride and go to a job, it was like another fucking dummy. I used to go to him. I go, "Why don't you just go to sleep? I go, go to sleep somewhere <laughs> and I'll do this because you're just fucking everything up." Now they would go to HR and you'd be uh, reprimanded or fired. How great was it to figure out your nap spot? Fantastic. Holy shit, was Dude, that great. I used to find little nooks oh and crannies. Oh, my God. There's a place. It's called the Omni Building um, in uh, Oak, Oak, uh, not Oakdale, uh, Uniondale. Okay. It's a big brown fucking building. I There were nooks and crannies in the basement of that building that I slept for hours. Hours. And I'd have the pager, uh, like under my head, under my hand, and my hand on my, uh, my head on my hand. So when the pager would buzz, my head would buzz and it would wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> it was like an alarm clock. And a boss is coming alarm clock. <laughs> but the point is, you got your job done. Yeah. At the end of the done. day, you got your job done. I just had to sleep something off at the beginning of the day. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> you know. Uh, the work. Don't worry about it. Construction company and people calling over. All right, whatever. Uh, firemen. All right, and then a teacher, and then we, uh, and then I think we take a break. We'll do the Mars thing oh, after the break. I want to hear. We've gone an hour and a half here. Cody, what's up? Hey guys, what's going on? Hey, hey man. Uh, we uh, got a little memo the other day from Human Resources. Now, firemen in Houston, they don't want us bunkering out anymore in the truck because it's dangerous. They want us to wait till we get to the fire, then bunker up, and then go in the fire. Why dangerous. is it dangerous what? to be bunkered up in the truck? We're fighting fire. What the fuck is dangerous? What are we doing? I don't. <laughs> you're going into a fire. What? What is the term bunker up? Uh, have oh, your gear shit. on? Yeah, they're all the, gear all the on. Shit. Yeah, we can't even put our gear on until we get to the fire. That's gonna look good on the family sitting outside, and we're putting our shit on. Yeah, wait, exactly. wait, 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 wait. But what? I don't understand why. That's a bad thing. Because no, I mean, why can't you bunker up before you get to a fire? I don't understand that. Why is it dangerous? There's so many wrecks, and, and when you're trying to put your pack on and stuff, and you don't have your seatbelt on, and there's a wreck, you know, you, oh, you get hurt. Gotcha. You can't, you can't like yeah, buckle up. And they, yeah, but and on that uh, GPS shit, yeah, there's an automatic deal on the ambulance that we have. 
And if we go 85 miles an hour over, I mean, like 85 miles an hour, it uh, sends a uh, text or something to our supervisor. So as soon as we go over, we're getting a text while we're driving saying, you need to slow down. You what know what happens if you ambulance? You know what happens if you do 88 miles an hour, my friend? Uh-huh. Enough said. Enough said. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's ridiculous, man. Uh, Make it yeah, so, see, he's like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Stay away from that. Back to the future <laughs> shit, please. Oh, no, look, it's Friday. staying on Danny's shirt. Oh, please, oh, yeah. no. Oh, for the love of God, yeah, yeah. no. We've no, been no, very no, good no. lately. Let me say hi to, <laughs> I think it's Rick, Nova Scotia. He's a teacher. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's up? Whoa. It's Friday, and you guys got to get your blood pressure down. <laughs> I know, uh, uh, I know, my uh, trust right. <laughs> what? Nova Scotia. Yeah, what do you got, Rick? Uh, yeah, teachers and instructors, they're not allowed to use the term rule of thumb in instruction or any application whatsoever. Why? Because one kid doesn't have a thumb in class? <laughs> no, because of what it was referred to, where it came from. Rule Where did the term okay. rule of thumb I would, come from? Anthony knows a little something about everything. I guarantee, yeah, you don't know. I, and I guarantee most people listening don't know where that term comes from. It, it, it was the uh, measurement you used to uh, use the thickness of your thumb to measure the size of the stick you could discipline your wife with. If it was thicker than your thumb, it was abuse. <laughs> Is that where, really where that came from? <laughs> That's where it came from. Are you and, kidding me? Okay, okay. And, hold on. and uh, because of political correctness, you can't use it. Wow, I got <laughs> all right. I got retard <laughs> thumbs, man. My <laughs> my wife would be in trouble if this was old school. Let's uh, let's. <laughs> Here it is. It is often claimed that the term originally referred to a law that limited the maximum thickness of a stick with which it was permissible for a man to beat his wife, but this has been discredited, mm. sir. Oh, that's it. It's the political Well, do they have the... the um, it's the suit saying that it can't be used because it's offensive. Mm. All right. Hey, there you go. Have a good weekend, boys. Thank you, Rick. There goes Rick. All right, we the phones. We'll go back to you guys after the break. Yeah, hang in there. Oh, what do we got today? Patrice O'Neill in about an oh, hour. Patricky coming in. Patricky's coming in. Nice. We got Kurt Angle crying. Oh my yes. God! Speaking for of real, wrestling. not a yeah, uh, wrestling no, angle. No, not a work. No, it's really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh shit! He was stalking his uh, wife. No, he was accused of stalking. Remember when he was in here and we asked him about the black girl from TNA that he was dating? How could we forget? Right. He was accused of stalking her. Uh oh. And. I thought he, it was his ex-wife or something. Wasn't no, it he a had little, a whole other story with his ex-wife. Wasn't he a little off last time he was in? Do you remember him being a little... His pupils were so small. A little strange and when he was in. He, he swears was, he's not doing anything. And yeah, he was a little to this weird. day, I wish we called him out a little more. But, I mean, he's, well, I mean, he's been a friend Jesus for years. Jesus Christ. And, you know, we all were, like, uncomfortable as he was saying that, you know, he's nothing's going on with him. You just know. He did scold me when I said steroids were bad, and he said, no... Only if you misuse them. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, possible origin of the phrase, rule of thumb, comes from measurement, particularly in agricultural fields. The plants need a fairly precise depth to seed properly, whether planted from seed or being replanted. But the depth can uh, be sometimes estimated using the thumb. That is a rule measurement of thumb. That's probably the rule of thumb. That's probably probably more accurate, right? I don't know. I think it's how far you can shove uh, uh, it up your ass. No, no, forget it. Up your I'm ass. not even gonna try. I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped short. <laughs> I tried to make a dirty joke, and it failed miserably. <laughs> rule of thumb: stop the joke. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we go to break. Ah, yes.